Hi, this is Data Driven Insights, and today I want to talk about uh, the implications of uh, COVID-19, particularly quarantine conditions on uh, um, behavioral science studies. Um, so obviously, uh, with the current uh, with the current quarantine uh, that we experience in many countries, uh, we can no longer uh, conduct laboratory experiments, which is kind of one of the main. Uh, methods uh, which is used in 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 uh, data science in uh, behavioral data science and behavioral science um, and you know related fields like experimental economics or psychology and um, uh, obviously when we when we consider this problem um, it, it's um, it will have a significant effect uh, not only for the studies that we're conducting this year but in subsequent years as well. Uh, why is that? Uh, so the reason for this is that uh, obviously there are longitudinal studies that we need to run in the lab and uh, it doesn't seem like uh, uh, this year we will be able to do so. I'm really hoping that maybe closer to the end of the year we will be able to return to the labs. But it looks like the majority of uh, behavioral science studies that we're conducting this year will be online studies. And online studies are very, very different from uh, laboratory laboratory studies. Uh, so normally, um, if you're not familiar with behavioral science me methods, if you are kind of just interested in, in, in uh, this methodology, and this is why you're watching this video, uh, normally, uh, you know, we write uh, decision theoretic models or game theoretic models as behavioral scientists, and then we invite people to the laboratory, and we ask them a series of questions. And uh, the point of getting people into the laboratory is that uh, we can control the environment in which we're asking these questions. So we are trying to make sure that none of the features of uh, um, decision environment uh, due to context or you know, other things uh, are actually affecting the, uh, the study subjects or the participants in the experiment. However, you know, if we are forced to do the studies online, it's completely different. And uh, you are essentially losing control. So what we get is the leaks in control. So due to this reason uh, and many others that uh, we're going to discuss in a second, uh, uh, the number of online studies uh, uh, is usually quite limited in behavioral science because, you know, researchers are trying to uh, run laboratory studies where they can control the environment. And um, to give you a specific example, so we just uh, mined uh, um, uh, papers on SSRN, which is one of the main repositories for experimental economics. And if we look ex at experimental economics papers, um, if we compare 2018 to 2019 to to 2020, uh, in 2018, we only had 15% of all studies that you know, were classified as experimental studies on SSRN that uh, were conducted as online studies. Uh, in 2019, uh, the percentage increased to 24. But currently, all studies that we're conducting in behavioral science are actually online studies. So why is that a problem? Let's look at this problem a little more closely. So these are, uh, uh, this is a kind of a comprehensive list, but it's probably not ex exhaustive list of issues that uh, you might experience uh, as a researcher who wants to conduct online uh, experiments um, as opposed to lab experiments. So there are definitely big control leaks, and again, there might be more uh, more um, control leaks that, that I have listed here. But essentially, uh, the, the following uh, comes to mind. Identity verification. The biggest problem in online experiments is that you cannot verify people's identity. So it could be, you know, it could be me uh, participating in an experiment, but it could be my son participated, participating in an experiment. And there is usually no way to know. Uh, 
Um, there are, of course, uh, some uh, mitigation techniques that you can apply. For example, you can insist on actually, you know, recording subjects while they're participating. So at least you, you have some idea of how, potentially how old they are, but still this is not um, a very good way of, you know, there is no uh, way to ensure that, you know, what you see is what you get. So essentially, uh, you know, there are uh, many, many issues with identity verification when we have online experiments. By the way, I think uh, current online exam procedures uh, in the universities, when, you know, people take online exams, this, you know, uh, online exams face exactly the same issue, you know, identity ver verification is a big problem. There is a lot of heterogeneity in instruction comprehension. So uh, some people who uh, take online studies would completely understand and uh, read uh, the instructions carefully, but others would not read them at all or <laughs> will read a part of them and then they will get fed up. And so essentially you will have a lot of heterogeneity. Uh, normally in laboratory experiments, uh, you know, an experimenter reads uh, all instructions. Of course, uh, you can pre-record instructions. And again, you can uh, uh, play the recording to the participants, but because you do not control uh, what exactly they're doing, you know, they could just uh, put the instructions on and then uh, go somewhere, get a cup of tea <laughs> and not actually listen to instructions while you are doing them. Um, decision times are shorter. Yeah, generally, you know, we observe that in a laboratory experiment, it takes approximately seven seconds per decisions, decision. Um, in uh, online decisions are shorter. So, uh, um, there is a debate about by how much, but in my personal exp experience, I don't know about others, it takes about five seconds instead of seven seconds when we do experiments online, at least uh, the experiments that we have done with my group. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's uh, again another you know, potential concern. Uh, people might not be paying as much attention, you know, for various reasons. You know, uh, when you, uh, again, when you are conducting experiments online, there could be unpredictable disruptions and distractions to um, participants. So you could have uh, internet outages, you could have, you know, the subjects could be distracted and these distractions would be different. So for example, when you are in the lab and you have a distraction for whatever reason, again, you can have like failure of software or something like this. Um, all subjects will be affected in the same way. So if, you know, something didn't work, then all subjects would, would have a similar experience. Um, online, different uh, participants in the experiment would have different experiences, and this is a problem. Uh, high dropout rate, yes, uh, you know, <laughs> there is, like when people are in the lab, uh, you very rarely have a, a situation when someone says, oh, you know what, I actually changed my mind about participating in this experiment and they would leave. But online, you know, people could leave uh, for whatever reason or for even for no good reason. And uh, you need to be prepared for this. So they will, you know, they will not uh, complete uh, all of the tasks, uh, you know. And this is a partic particularly bad problem for group experiments. So if you have an experiment where people interact or you have groups that are formed, you know, if one subject drops out, then you basically can, you know, throw away the entire group observation. Data reliability. Okay, so there is a lot of debate about data reliability. Some publications say that online panels are not very reliable. Others say that you need to be careful. Uh, they are reliable, but you need to be careful how you select the subjects. So um, there is no uh, basically agreement here, but the point is, again, you have to be very careful about data reliability, maybe double check. Um, random clicking risk, yeah, this is a very common problem that people just don't read anything, they just click randomly. I can give you an example of one of my studies, which was uh, quite funny when um, uh, I needed uh, Chinese um, uh, participants for a particular study, so we have written the whole experiment in Chinese, but then this experiment by mistake was sent by the, you know, panel provider, a company that we uh, 
that we hired to to uh, you know approach the subjects on our behalf. Actually, we sent to people who were um, uh, not necessarily Chinese, so some of them couldn't understand anything <laughs> in this entire experiment because they didn't speak Chinese, but they still filled out all the tasks. Like every single subject filled out all the tasks. So that's an example when you could just have this random clicking, and again, the data reliability will be very low. Uh, trust issues, yes. So there is um, a considerable problem with trust. Uh, when online subjects, they might not trust that there is a human on the other side. They might not quite understand that you are a researcher, you are not a commercial entity running studies. So all these things could come into play when you are doing these online experiments. And of course, um, sample issues. So uh, online panel is normally different from the panel you would get in, in into the lab, right? And uh, you need to think how to counterbalance that. Like for example, if in the lab, you can probably, if you are working with general public, you could probably get uh, people of all ages and. Uh, um, when we talk about online panels, certain types of populations, for example, um, elderly people probably are not that engaged with, uh, with online platforms, so you would not have them in your, in your sample, and uh, you need to take care of this. Okay, so what are the takeaways uh, from this? So we've discussed um, a very important problem that you know behavioral science studies this year will be severely affected by the fact that we'll not be able to uh, conduct uh, experiments uh, in the laboratory. Most probably we will not be able to do that until the end of the year. So at least I, I would doubt that we will be able to do that. Um, so, and this would have uh, huge implications, not only for this year, studies conducted this year, but any comparison study that you need to do or any longitudinal study that you need to do and take measurements in 2020, you will basically, you could just assume you basically have a gap for 2020 because uh, when you're conducting a study online, it's not the same as conducting the study in the lab. Again, you can take a number of measurements, uh, me uh, you can take a number of measures to prevent uh, this, the problems from happening. For example, yeah, you can introduce uh, uh, video monitoring of experiments, but again, you know, um, it, it is very difficult to counterbalance all the possible things that could go wrong uh, with online panels. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, we should just stop doing behavioral studies this year. Of course not. We should continue them. But uh, um, we need to be uh, aware of the fact that we probably will not be able to compare data that we collected in 2020 with uh, um, uh, uh, data in, so we will not be able to, we will, we will be able to compare, but we will not be able to combine the data that we co um, uh, collected this year with uh, data uh, we collected in, you know, previous years, so maybe even next year when we hopefully go back to normal. Thanks a lot and um, keep thinking. <laughs>